Dave, I'm just turning. There's uh, some bikes just southbound. The first had a very, very small plate. You want me to take a walk you a little bit? You might even be lucky at that, Dave. They'll be, uh, they'll be fair cracking on towards you, mate. Traffic Sergeant Pete Stringer is patrolling an accident hotspot looking for dangerous bikers. So we've just seen some motorbikes coming out. Uh, the first one had a very, very small number plate on what we call chase plates. The only reason they have those on is to uh, either try and get away from the police or to evade capture for speeding offences or antisocial riding. They were weaving all over the place as if uh, pretending they were on a, a Grand Prix track. Just seeing if we can catch up with them. And this is the problem that we have every single weekend in the Yorkshire Dales. And this is why we have so many motorcycle fatalities. Every week, up to six bikers die and 115 are seriously injured. It's one thing driving quickly in a car where you've got substantial piece of metal around you with many, many airbags to ride on something where you're so vulnerable. Pete catches up with the group of three bikers and gets behind the one with the small number plate. In. As I'm alongside him, the wind is down, I'm shouting, pull over next junction. And then the next minute, he's just gone. Well over 100 miles an hour, wrong side of a double white line into oncoming traffic on a blind bend, unadulterated stupidity. Oscar Romeo 56, motorcycle failing to stop, southbound away. What could be worth risking your life that much to get away? Dave, can you get the other two stopped that we're running with him? I'm going to let this one go. I'm never going to get anywhere near him. He's going to kill somebody. Yeah, that's good. Just not safe to continue pursuing. I mean, what an absolute moron. Traffic cop David Minto has stopped two bikers. Was it yourself? Well, with that lad uh, with a little chase plate on. No, he was just going to fly past. Did he? I'm with two more statements. They say they weren't with your friend and rider. You just flew past them. But I'll grab the details. I'll come and join you, Dave. So the one that's failed to stop for us was riding with two others, one that was very, very similar in uh, machine and leathers. So we just think that he may have located and managed to stop the other two that mysteriously turned off. Are you happy you've got all the details? Right, but I'm this close to locking you up for obstructing right. and perverting the course of justice. The lad that's made off, you were riding with him, OK? You were with him, so don't lie to me, yeah? He's endangering me, other members of the public, by riding like an absolute tool. Why do it? And now you're here lying to my colleague, saying that you don't know him. Do you want my details to pass to your riding buddy, or do I need to send you some paperwork through the post and you can have your day at court as well, lads? No to which? What's, what's... Oh, so you do know him? Well, I don't know, I don't know you him. You do know him? I don't know him, know him. I don't know him. You don't know him, know him, but now you do know him. Right. So, wait, you have a think for a minute, and I'll come back to you. We can always have this conversation under caution on interview at custody yeah. if you want, OK? It's called perverting the course of justice and get you into more trouble than him. Okay. Yeah? I've only tried to stop him for a dodgy plate. You're riding with him when he's waving all over the place like an absolute idiot, trying to warm his tyres up, thinking he's blinking Valentino Rossi or something. Go on a racetrack, yeah? Why endanger me or my wife and my kids by riding like absolute idiots? What's wrong with you? I can be fairly direct when it's required, uh, and these two are blatantly lying and have done the job too long, so they got fairly short shrift. Right, you know how to get in contact with him, don't you? Yeah, cos you've arranged to have a bike ride with him. So you can either give me his mobile number or you can take my details and tell him he needs to contact me. Well, whichever way, cos you're the one at the moment that's yeah. staring down the barrel, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah? You're the one riding with him. You're the one that's complicit in his manner of riding. You're the one that can get yourself into equal amount of bother as him. Yeah? 
Because at the end of the day, you know exactly who he is. You know how to get hold of him. You know where he is. He had nothing wrong with your riding, so why cover for him? Why cover for him? No, I'm not. Give us a name. Give us a number. No, that's what I mean. I've been not covering for him. Where did you meet? What, today or...? Today. Met him at DP. Gonna be more specific than that. So how did he get in contact, or did he just meet at BP on some sheer fluke? No, we met at BP, I just messaged him on Facebook. Right. It's like pulling teeth, is this? We're finally getting somewhere. Once you can get onto somebody's Facebook page, you know, there's photographs of the suspect on a similar machine in similar leathers, so obviously not the brightest of sparks, shall we say. Are you happy for these two gents to go? Yeah. Right, gents, thank you for that. Got his name, got his date of birth, got his home address and his vehicle. I'm sorry, Bob. Right. Please. No. Please think on. I don't know what your personal circumstances are, but I'm guessing you work for a living, last thing you I've need. I've got my own business, mate, yeah. Exactly. Enjoy. Enjoy the roads. Enjoy riding them. It, it ain't worth killing yourself or somebody else for him, for him to ride like that. Yeah? We're happy for you guys to go. I've obviously got your details and we can be in touch if we need to. If you do happen to message or speak with him, you have my details, he needs to email me. He may wish to come to Skipton Police Station and we can do things amicably, or we can go and find him. He's going to be certainly getting disqualified if he's not already, uh, and he's going to have a day out at court. So, yeah, very angry, uh, but pleased that we're going to move it in the right direction and get him dealt with. Coming up... Have you been riding your motorbike this morning? Pete tracks down the suspected runaway rider. I've no idea what you're talking about. And a 70-year-old biker crashes down a steep embankment. Where was that, Pete? Oh, in your back. He's in a bad way. Earlier... In. A motorcyclist failed to stop for traffic sergeant Pete Stringer. What an absolute moron. With the help of social media, Pete believes he's identified the wanted rider. As traffic cop David Minto searches for CCTV at a nearby petrol station... I'm just trying to ascertain an address for the gentleman. Pete's running background checks. He does have a driving licence, but not one that entitles him to drive motorcycles. Uh, and he's uh, got, unsurprisingly, a, an appalling driving history. Uh, dangerous driving, failing to stop multiple times, as well as driving without a licence and insurance, time after time after time. So hopefully with the inquiries that Dave's doing, as well as it should all marry up together. While he waits for David's check on the CCTV, Pete goes after the rider. We're at the keeper's property now. Fortunately, on his Facebook page, I'd seen the uh, the large dog, so uh, when it came round the corner, we were secure behind the gate. Don't rush to open the gate on my account. Could I have a quick word with you? Is it possible to put the dog away? Yeah, come on. Hmm. We've had an incident this morning involving a motorbike. I've got a motocross bike. Have you been out on your motorbike no. this morning? No. Do you have a motorbike? Oh, your motocross bike. Can I have a look? Do you have just the one motorbike? Yep. One, one motorbike. I've got a licence for a road bike. It's a 1998 model. Yeah. Right. Okay, Have you been riding your motorbike this morning? No. You don't have access to any other motorbikes? What what leathers and helmets do you have? Um, I've got. Okay, any other helmets? Just, that's it. So, is there anything you want to tell me about what's gone on this morning? There's nothing else I'd like to say about the matter. I've no idea what you're talking about. I have to accept what you're telling me because I can't disprove it at the moment. Yeah. Suffice to say, obviously, if the other inquiries come back to sort of support that it is you, then obviously I'm going to be a bit miffed. But if it isn't you, don't have to worry about it. No yeah? No right, lovely. I'll get out of your way.
Great. Right, thank you very much for your time. Later. Time right now. Bye-bye. Right, I'm convinced that this is my suspect, but I haven't got quite enough to go further with him at the moment, and I don't want to sort of show my hand and what I've got, because I knew that my colleague was busy at the BP garage obtaining the CCTV footage. Go ahead, Dev. What sort of clothing was he wearing? Did he have red in his leathers? Predominantly black leathers. There were some flashes of red. So I think there's red in the leathers, but only a little bit. Leave it with me, I'll just have another look. Yeah, affirmative. He now has to wait until David arrives with the CCTV that might identify the rider. Initial injuries look like chest, neck, and back pain. Can't move his legs. They've got uh, helmet and other resources on route. Around 12,000 motorbike accidents occur each year in the UK. North Yorkshire is very popular for motorcyclists. We've got some gorgeous, long, windy, open roads that just lend themselves nicely to to being on a motorbike. Far to right. I'm heading up towards Bella Bib. That's one to make it. Obviously, motorbikers are a very vulnerable road user. I am not a biker, and seeing what I see, I, I would not get on the back of one. Traffic cop Emma Wallace is rushing to the scene of a serious accident. A motorcyclist in his 70s has come off his bike and has fallen about 15 feet down an embankment. He has pain to his back and he's saying that he can't move his legs, which would be indicative of a spinal injury. That's really not a, a good sign. You know, is he going to lose the the use of his legs? It's a nice sunny day, but like for me, I'm, I'm feeling the side wind in a car. Um, so on a motorbike, I can see you're going to get bashed about a little bit. Oh, there we go. He's been seen by ambulance. Where is he? As I'm getting out of the car, I can see that the air ambulance crew are already with him. Far to eight exam, set six at this collision. The biker has skidded off the road and crashed 15 feet down an embankment. Where was that pain? In your back. He's in a bit of a bad way. It's a hell of a drop for anybody but that can be quite life-changing for someone who is elderly. How old are you? 70. Put your hands on your chest, keep dead still. We're going to put a board underneath you, OK? He's conscious, he's breathing, he's communicating with the, uh, with the air ambulance staff, which is an absolute bonus. You can see the skid mark. Yeah. He's, yeah. Come he's put his locks up. The sun would have been in his eyes. Direct, yeah. Right. A bike landed there, come off. Yeah. The bike's rolled and he's gone rolled afterwards. Uh, yeah. I'll have a walk up yeah. just with him saying that the back wheel's locked up. Apparently there's skid marks. That's the end of the skid mark there. All the way up here. So it's gone all the way down there and then he's left the road. The bike has gone through the gorse bush here and then they've both landed separately just down there. How's your pain now? Still the exactly same. Exactly the same account. What was the update on injuries again? So Abdominal, chest, pains. Nothing the concern. Nothing life-threatening or changing. Yeah, excellent. That's what we like. The biker's friend was riding behind him when he lost control. He was wearing an air vest. The lifesavers. Yeah. Basically. That's, that had gone off. Uh, so... So how do they actually... What, what triggers them, then? Well, this has a detector that fits on the forks that fires it. Yeah. But the manual ones, it's got a linyard and it's actually plugged to the bike. So as soon as so that disconnects... The, bike, the jacket blows up. Uh, and obviously that's inflated because I've got the canister that shows it's gone off. Yeah. Um, could have been a lifesaver there, you don't yeah. know. Yeah. Hopefully they'll get him patched up at hospital. Yeah. An air vest, it's an airbag for bikers. 
I think it's a relatively newish concept and I'm hoping that, you know, it might catch on. But certainly in this circumstance, I would say it's not prevented injury, but I think it's certainly lessened the injuries. No, I was just, I was about maybe 100 yards, 150 yards behind, and uh, he come to that corner and he just seemed to have the back end locked up. Uh, a bit of blue smoke and then it went across the road and obviously disappeared. Not the way to finish the day. If he doesn't know the road, then, yeah, he's just been caught out, hasn't he? No-one else involved. You know how vulnerable you are on, on a motorbike. Sometimes it's just that ever so slight, you know, take the bend ever so slightly wrong and it, it just all goes to pot, doesn't it? The main thing is he's all right. All right, cheers, bye-bye. Right, let these people get going. With the large majority of North Yorkshire's bike accidents due to rider error, when speed is involved, the consequences can be devastating. 70 miles away, traffic cop David Minto is investigating a suspected dangerous rider. Yeah, affirmative. We're at the keeper's property now. He's meeting Sergeant Pete Stringer with some further evidence that might identify the biker. Um, I get the CCTV. And these images show uh, my suspect without his helmet on, on the BP4 court. It's him getting off that machine in the leathers. He's absolutely banged to right. It's, it's sort of game, set and match, really. Oh, absolutely. It's just him. So it just confirms my suspicions that he has lied to us. Right, I'm going back again. See you shortly. Right. I'm going to interview you on caution. It is your choice whether you get interviewed here yeah. or I arrest you and take you to a police station. You can interview me, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I give him one more opportunity to be interviewed and treated like the adult that he doesn't deserve to be. He's been interviewed under caution. He's now commented every single question. All right, bud, see you later. Out, out, out. Bye bye. But that said, once he's been reported for multiple uh, driving offences, uh, he's, he's then started crying. So, by his body language, he's shown an admission, but he has no comment at all the question that's been asked. I've given him every opportunity to say, would somebody have used his details if he wasn't the rider? And he's still chosen to no comment. So, um, all the paperwork will go off this afternoon and he can get a summons and uh, have a court appearance. I'm hoping it sends out a strong message to other motorcyclists, the efforts and the lengths that we will go down to track you, to, to prosecute you if you come across here and commit offences. Coming up... Listen, wait, right, 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 calm yourself right, down. An aggressive biker squares up. Go over there and I will speak to you. I am not speaking to you outside of a road like this. His helmet's come off, probably as he's hit the sign. And a serious motorbike crash raises suspicions. He's clearly not been in control of the vehicle. And he smells of alcohol. Yeah, just going to try and catch up with some motorcyclists. We heard him go past him. As the weather gets nicer, we often see a huge increase in the amount of bikers who hit the roads. These bikes can hit speeds uh, not to 60 within a couple of seconds. PC Mike Rowan is patrolling the A19 near Selby. The bikes are more designed for a racetrack, not necessarily the roads. If you hit a pothole uh, at that kind of speed, the results of that can be catastrophic. Motorcyclists make up 4% of the traffic on Britain's roads, but 20% of all road casualties. As Mike parks up, a group of bikers grab his attention. The lead motorcyclist in the group has what we refer to as a chase plate on his bike. 
These tiny registration plates make it almost impossible for speed cameras and police officers to read them. There we go. Hey. What are you doing there? You made fun of my bike, you idiot. Right, I'm not. Yeah, you are. You're Listen, right, you're calm yourself down. No, Go no, over no, there. No. I will speak to you in a minute, okay, all right? Take no, because you're squaring up to me. Go over there. Right, me. go over take there, and I will speak to you. I am not speaking to you outside of the road like this. Take Go over there, and I will speak to you. Right, but I can't have you squaring up to me like that, can I? Move over there. Move over there. Hey? I don't take orders from you. I'm giving you a direction, right, because you are squaring up to me on the side of the road. It can be a very difficult place to be when you're confronted with somebody squaring up to you. I'm there to deal with offences and the incident that I've seen in front of me, and that's going to happen whether this guy kicks off with me or not. Right. Which way have you been stopped? OK. I did all wrong, so you'll tell me why I've been stopped. Right. Calm What's yourself down, and obviously. No, 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 I'm talking to you. Right. I understand. You've stopped me. I pulled over for you. I saw yeah. you. I did do nothing wrong. I filtered past the cars, which yeah. is quite within my right to That's do. That's fine, yeah. And I understand that, obviously, a member of my gang has obviously raised your tension. Just calm down. We can talk, and we can sort right. the problem out. What okay. is the issue? Was this your bike? It is, yes. Yeah. This one here. The right. Suzuki, yeah? Yeah. So, it's to have a chat with you about your number plate, OK? Oh, all right. It's small. Well, it's illegal, all right? So, what, what's your name? Mark. Mark, Mark Rock. I'm not obliged to tell you that. Yes, you are, because you're using a bike on a road. So you acquired under a road traffic act to give me your details. Well, if you pay and see my bike, you'll see. Right, but I'm, I'm asking you for proof of a driving licence as well. No so problem. have you got a driving yeah. licence on yeah, you? I have, yeah. So why are you telling me that you're not going to give me a surname? I've not told you that. I said, am I, you said I, you're not obliged to give me Am I obliged to give you? No, you understand what I said to me. I said, right. am I obliged to give you my surname? You asked yes, me my you name, are. And yeah. I gave you it as Mark. Right, have you got any ID on you? I certainly have, yes. Right, OK. Can I have a look at you it, please? certainly can, yeah. Cheers, thank you. OK. But now was... I know why you stopped me, because I've got my show plate on, which should be... I've got the proper plate under the seat. Right. Do you want me to prove that to you? Yeah, go on. Because I was going to say, because that doesn't look like a normal number plate. No, so... it's certainly done. So that number plate that you had on it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ..right, was a show plate. Yeah. But that one that you've just put it on there now is also illegal, OK? Because it's got to comply with certain regulations. Oh, right? So, not... around yeah, yeah. about, let's see, sizing of lettering, spacing, yeah. I can report you for that offence and then you'll get a fine for it. OK. All right? OK? What I'm going to do... Let's hope you've had a good Sunday. Eh? Let's hope you've had a good Sunday and you're in a good look, mood. That's no, fine, I understand. Look, One right. Second. I try and be reasonable, yeah. right, and try and deal with people as low level as I possibly can do. Yeah. What I don't appreciate is that when everyone starts getting in my face and yeah, being yeah, aggressive no, no. towards me, well, that's why I came particularly when I'm at the yeah, side yeah, of the road. Yeah, that's why I came over. Yeah? So I'm going to give you something called a VDRS, so that Vehicle Defect Rectification Scheme. Yeah. Do you understand that that gives you two weeks yeah, to get it changed? Yeah. Get it, well, from midnight, okay. get it stamped, come into a police station, and then provided that's done, that'll be the end of the matter. OK. Yeah? yeah? All right. Is this your first ride of the year today? Yeah, yeah. Have, have you taxed day, it? Have, have you taxed it? Oh, I'm having a good Sunday, am I? You're not. I've sawned it, am I? Yes. I'm having a good day, am I? OK. Right. So you haven't taxed it? No. no. Right. Obviously, there's no tax on it. 465, can we um, arrange recovery for this bike, oh, you are please? Doing, I'll, I'll explain it. But you understand what I've done. It's the first ride yeah. out of the year. Yeah. I've sawn it and totally forgot about it. Look, we're all human, aren't we? Yeah, we all we make are. mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? He isn't happy about having his bike recovered, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, he's made a mistake of not taxing it. So uh, he's got the responsibility to ensure that his bike is fully road legal. And if it's not, then it'll go on a recovery truck and get taken away. Unfortunately, you've made that mistake yeah, yeah, and you're not taxed it. No, no. All right. You know, um, you're being fair with that ticket, mate. You can give me a, a fine, really, and I appreciate that. I'm having a good day, aren't I? While the man tries to get it taxed, Mike deals with the angry biker. Mate, do you want to chat no, to discuss? No, no, you don't? No. All right. What I don't appreciate, though, mate, what go I'm going to say, go right, on. I don't appreciate you squaring up to me. I said, when I'm, when I'm stood here... Listen, you was that much away from taking me off my bike. I get that. Oh. I appreciate you're unhappy. 
All right, I, I get that, right? right? Okay. However, the way that you behave towards me, when I'm stood on the far side of that white line in a lane of moving traffic and you're squaring up to me, right, shouldn't you shouldn't have done that, that yeah, all right? Yeah. I shouldn't have squared up to you like that. I were wrong. Yeah. But I were all right. Angry. Okay. Angry. All I want to do is make sure that I'm not having to come along and scrape, bike a body pass off the road. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. 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 Right. Spot on. All right. A lot of the um, the jobs that we deal with, it's about how we speak to people, and obviously by having a chat with these bikers, they've all calmed down. It's tax now, mate. It's tax. Yeah. Right. Show us proof of tax. Just, you'll have a look before I click finish. Yeah. I can only apologise, mate. I didn't realise that I'd, uh, when I sold it in February. Yeah, no, that's fine. How often than not, we will seize uh, vehicles if they've got no tax or no insurance. On this occasion, uh, the motorcyclist could taxi out the roadside and he'll still be reported for the offence, but on this occasion, he's got a little bit lucky and he's allowed to ride the bike away. Appears to have come from the Patsy Road roundabout towards Wigginton Road. So true signage from that side. We'll make towards. We'll just make sure that any witnesses are present remain at the scene. Traffic cops Chris Storey and David Minto are the nearest officers to the accident. We went into um, a part of a, a collision where a motorcyclist collided with the signs on a, on a roundabout. The rider of the motorcycle is believed to have some serious injuries. Whenever I'm called to a collision, it's always in the back of my mind, is it a motorcycle? Because a lot of the time, when they are involved, we're looking at serious injuries, if not death. The latest we've got is he's in pain to his back. He's not being moved. He's laid on his back. Thank you. One of the updates suggested that he might have a broken back, and obviously it could get could get worse than that. He could die at the scene or on the way to the hospital or whatever. So we need to make sure that we've got the scene sealed off for now. Go ahead. One and three. Can you show us six, please? With every bit of information, I'm just hoping and praying that it's going to be good news. He's been coming from that way, hasn't he? He's gone up onto here. Yeah. Gone straight over through the chevron. Oh! What hurt then? I think it was for the inside. There have been a couple of vehicles present who turned out to be witnesses, so they're an absolute gold to telling us the story of, of what's happened and how ultimately this chap's led to be lying in the middle of a roundabout. So we've gone past you first. So I'm 20, 30 yards in front of him yeah. in this lane, and yeah. then he's gone round, just missed me, and then clearly just... lent one way, bike, yeah. took the bike the other way. You can see there's a lot of gravel over there, and he's just lost control, come out onto the roundabout here, and um, he's, he's become detached from the motorcycle, and he's gone through the chevron board. Ready, set, oh! Where was that? Yeah, it's more like a park, isn't it? Yeah. So we could look at the bikes to see um, for obvious damage. As you can see from the sign, he's hit it with uh, a fair amount of clout. Them things don't come off easily. He's telling me it has come off when officers have got here, so yeah, we'll just uh, we'll wait and see what his injuries are at the minute. He's pumping in with a lot of sort of, sort of pain across the left side of his ribs. Just continuing to examine him and try and get some pain relief in him, but um, he's having a bit of a shock. The officer that was supporting this chap's head has suggested to us that he smells of alcohol. He'll most likely go into hospital, so the chances are we'll have to follow him down and uh, look at getting a sample of blood or urine. For somebody to get on a motorcycle under the influence of alcohol, um, Obviously, it's just a really, really bad decision. It's most likely going to end in disaster. There's nothing obvious, but he might have a, a broken rib or something like that. But there's nothing that they particularly worry about, life-threatening or out like no. that, is there? No, definitely no. not. So, I mean, I've had a look at uh, his helmet and there's literally no damage to it. No. So his, his helmet's come off, probably as he's hit the sign. Yeah. But he's lucky he's not in one of them poles. Yeah, yeah. Well, that it, it would have been a different. Yeah. Would have been a different story, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
They've arrived at hospital now, and he has managed to get a breath sample out of him now. He's blown nearly double the, the limit. This is why we are targeting people that are using the roads whilst under the influence of alcohol and drugs. We're targeting them because we're trying to prevent being in this, in this exact situation. The rider is taken for x-rays, but it is clear that he's only suffered minor injuries. He's been extremely lucky because he's clearly not been in control of the vehicle, um, probably due to the amount of alcohol that he's got on board and the bad decision making he's made in, in riding. What his actions were on that night almost led to his kids not having the dad anymore. Two weeks later, with the rider now out of hospital, Chris pays him a visit. Shut the torch now. Hello, how are you doing? All right? Can I come straight in? Perfect. Thank you very much. The investigation's kind of circling around careless driving and also driving more so the prescribed limit for alcohol. So what did you come to you? What I remember is being only a couple of drinks and then not remembering the rest of the night. Mm. I think what's happened is I picked up a drink that's had something in it. And remember waking up in Scarborough and that's it. At the hospital, and yeah. That's the only thing I remember. How did it crash? How did it not die? That's a really, really good question because I've got no idea. In my honest opinion, you are an incredibly lucky person. You know, you're back here, you're with your family and that's all that matters and that's all that we care about. Thank you for your time. It doesn't really change anything, what he said, um, in terms of being spiked. We'll just have a look and see how much alcohol is in his system. And if he's over the limit, then he's over the limit. He's very apologetic. And ultimately, he's a family man. He's, um, he's got kids in that house that he's got to look, for, look after. And he knows that he's a very, very lucky boy. Coming up when a biker crashes into a cyclist. I could see the motorcycle parked unattended. The hunt is on for the missing motorcyclist. The rider's been picked up and gone, which is what's concerning me at the moment. Yes, this is just going to ask you, it's going to be here, thank you, Extra motorbike for cyclists. Yep. Traffic Sergeant Pete Stringer has been called out to another motorbike accident. So we've got reports of a, a collision between a motorcycle and a pedal cyclist. A motorcycle being in collision with a pedal cycle is fairly unusual. Any collision involving a motorcycle has the potential to, uh, to have serious injuries, never mind one uh, involving uh, a pedal cycle as well. So um, would suspect that they've probably both fallen from their respective vehicles. I mean, North Yorkshire as a county has absolutely everything, from the, the, the fast winding country roads to the, the scenery. Some of the motorcyclists, unfortunately, think that they can just ride as they wish without any consequences. You know, they come across, they want to use the road as a racetrack. Hello, my signal. Hiya. Hello there. Somebody called an ambulance. Well, we've called an ambulance, yeah, but uh, yeah, quite pleased to see you if you've got two minutes. Right, yeah, no, not a problem at all. Ah, uh, yeah. I no. take it he's still down there with his bike, is he? Just gone. I think his boss has just picked him up. Let me just go and park up near his yeah, bike and I'll come back to you. We were on scene very, very quickly, so whilst I could see the motorcycle parked unattended sort of round the corner, um, I was concerned that the rider had left the scene. And Aguila. The rider's been picked up and gone, which is what's concerning me at the moment. Hiya. Hello. Right. This is uh, Les. Get some details. Yeah. How are you feeling? Dirty. Yeah. Just shoulder or less dead anywhere else? Shoulder and ribs. Shoulder and ribs. Yeah, got male casualty uh, sat in the road. Have we called ambulance somewhere? Yes, yes, ambulance on route. Thank you. So whereabouts were you then, Leslie? Oh, we're just here. Literally here, but moving. Yeah, yeah. So how how, how far across into the carriageway, sort of? Right here on edge. I couldn't go anywhere. Right. I couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't have got a fag back in between me and the fence, you know. Right. It was literally the fact that the bike, the motorcycle, was here. 
So that's where the bike was. According to the cyclist, who's the only party that's present, uh, he's saying he was next to the, uh, the wooden picket fence, uh, and he's then been hit by the motorcyclist who's been cutting the corner. Um, obviously, that's his account. I haven't spoken with the motorcyclist yet, who's rather frustratingly left the scene. It's no different to uh, predominantly young lads in fast cars. They're not going to drive them within the, the speed limit. They're going to see what they're capable of at some point, and it's when that happens and it goes wrong on a motorcycle, there's, there's such little room for error. There's a cash car that picked him up, yeah, we think he, and he he, he we think work he works somewhere, somewhere down, down here. Just down here somewhere. I'll go and try and find this motorcyclist so I can gain pen to paper. You're all right staying with, they've got the details. So the motorcyclist has been picked up by his boss. I don't know where he works or where the boss is, so my concern is to try and get hold of the motorcyclist. Obviously, I want a specimen of breath from him uh, in case he's had anything to drink this morning or consumed anything after the collision. So we're just going to go and try and find this uh, this Nissan Qashqai that he's been picked up in down in the village of Gargrave. It, it works here. What's he doing over here? Well, he's got... L plates, aren't they, on his motorbike? Yeah, so. Oh, so I I never right, I'll go and see if I can find him. Grey 19 plate cash guy. Well, I just don't know why you would leave the scene knowing that the police have been called, knowing that you've injured somebody. It's a straightforward due care, it's nothing more sinister than that. He's got a licence, he's insured. I want to know, have they had a drink, have they used some other substance, or is there something wrong with their documentation? Cash guy, cash guy, cash guy, any cash guy? No cash guys. Yeah, it's there, isn't it? Morning, how we doing? Are you injured at all? Right. I located the rider at uh, one of the two pubs in Gargrave. He uh, came straight out to, to see us. Yeah, he's just obviously waiting for an ambulance to turn up to check him over. Any reason why he didn't stop and wait for us, or you just got to well, get to... I wanted to get my bike down here, cos I've obviously <laughs> started to wait. It did transpire, it was quite an innocent reason why he'd left the scene in that his boss had turned up when he'd rung him to say, I've been involved in a collision. Uh, and his boss had said, well, I'll pick you up and make sure you can get to work with it being a, a busy Sunday. I'll just get a specimen of breath from you, so I don't like your cigarette just yet. Yeah. I've been on it about two weeks ago. Nice deep breath, tight sail and keep blowing until I tell you to stop. And go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Lovely, smashing. It'll just analyse it. Obviously, 35 is the legal limit. Yeah. Lovely, that's yours. That? Souvenir. What did I get? Um, zero. <laughs> So I'll interview in relation to a potential due care and attention type of offence. That's not to say that you are guilty. I was coming around the corner, sort of like middle of roadish. I'd, I'd checked as I was going in. There's like some bushes and two. There trees. is, yeah, yeah. As I was going round, nothing there. So I've gone to lean in, and then he's there. So I've sort of gone straighten up, and he's like, gone, and we both got to and... It's so, happened. Yeah. Right. No, appreciate your honesty. Um, probably my fault, you know. But... Yeah. He said all the right things. He was very worried about the pedal cyclist and he did ultimately accept responsibility for the collision, which wasn't in any doubt anyway, but he, he did do the right thing by putting his hands up. Sorry, because I haven't been riding that long, and obviously I'm not checking my tires. like... I'm more bothered about him, to be honest. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's good to hear you saying that. As learning curves go, it's a fairly steep one for him. Um, he will be going to court. He will receive a fine and penalty points on what is his provisional uh, motorcycle licence. Right, bud. All right, see you later. Thank you very much. Time will tell whether he learns from it, but I'm, I'm optimistic. So we're just going to see our injured pedal cyclist from the collision that we went through. Good morning. Good morning. The main reason to come and see your good self was to obviously see how you're doing. Obviously, the collision occurs and you receive a fracture to your scapula and your clavicle. Are you on painkillers still? Are you yes. under physio? What, what, have you got to have surgery? Not physio, yeah. I've got to go back to uh, the fracture clinic next week. Right, OK. I can't go on holiday for a start. I was going away to France on my motorbike in, in June and I can't go. I can't do my lawns, I can't do my garden. 
I can't, it's just everything. I can't drive my car. I can't do nothing. I'm just sat here, aren't I? What can I do? Yeah. Just, just everything. Obviously, feel really, really sorry for him in that he's, he's got some fairly long-lasting injuries. Uh, whilst he's a fit, healthy bloke, he's obviously uh, done a few years, so it may take him a lot, bit longer to recover, but, um, yeah, he's going to be in a lot of pain and discomfort for a while to come yet. With North Yorkshire's open roads such a draw for bikers, policing them is a top priority for the traffic cops. The vast majority of bikers are just out for a, a nice drive, cup of tea, fish and chips, but there is a small cluster who want to wind it up. That small minority that come to North Yorkshire seem to believe naively that it's their personal racetrack. They can do what they like with no consequences. When it comes to bike crashes, obviously there's fatalities that we go to, limbs taken off. We see some really quite um, mangled states. If we can prevent one person being killed, we're ultimately preventing us having to knock on that door um, and tell somebody that a loved one isn't coming home. And that's why we do the job. We do the job to make it safer for everybody. Nice. 